Hello lovely people, welcome to the Geek Cupboard, I am Penge and welcome back to Crusader Kings 3 where we join for the very first time Duke Wealthy of Sjordsson of Cupboard. Let's just sit back a moment shall we and just drink that in, let's listen to that again and enjoy it very much indeed. Duke Wealthy of Sjordsson of Cupboard because of course last time out we finally got our hands on the Duchy of Mercia which allowed us to become a Duke and then of course we renamed the Duchy of Mercia to be something far more appropriate. It's now the Duchy of Cupboard, which is wonderful indeed. So there we go. That is the land that we own, and it's quite a lot of land. It's a lot of territory that we look after. I mean, it's not as much as uh, the Duchy of De Hubarth there. They still look after quite a lot of uh, quite a lot of England, mostly northern England, and also the entirety of Wales. Oh, bar the little bit that, uh, that King Richard's got there. But yeah, we're not quite at their size yet, but that is a sizable chunk of land that we're looking after, which is wonderful. So yes, we're a duke. We did it. It's taken a little while for us to get there, but we have got there in the end. So yes, we are a duke. This is our duchy, and it's all very wonderful indeed. So the means by which we actually got our hands on the title of the Duchy of Mercia was quite interesting indeed, because it involved entirely no bloodshed whatsoever, which I will admit was a big surprise. I was fully prepared to go to war for this title. I thought that there would be much war and fighting and killing and death and doom and all that kind of bad stuff, but no, it didn't come to that in the end. We did it relatively peacefully. Now I think maybe the threat of war and death and doom and whatever the other bad things I just said were, I think the threat of all those terrible things might have swayed it out way but no we did it relatively peacefully so we did this by creating a claimant faction on the title of the Duchy of Mercia itself and I think what must have happened is Waltheof must have just sent letters out to all the important people up and down the country saying to me like hey oh Waltheof here I don't know about you guys but I think I should have the title of the Duchy of Mercia not old Gluithian there because he doesn't know what he's doing also he's eight years old so you know I'm really old and far better at sort of leading places than he is so if you agree and you think I should be the Duke of Mercia RSVP by you know next Thursday or whatever and, um, and yeah, we'll see what we can do. Okay, love you, bye, kiss, kiss, kiss. And then we had to wait a little while for people to respond to our amazing letter. But people did respond. Lots of people responded. A surprising number of people joined our claimant faction. And I think we had eight of the people join us. So as well as us, we had nine people in the claimant faction, which meant that we had quite a lot of military strength to bear down upon young Duke Gluithian, and I think that might have swayed it for us. So some time passed, and it turned out that, yeah, we had loads of military. I think, did we have sort of almost 400% sort of more military strength than Duke Gluithian did? And then it came to a point where we sent him a letter. We issued him an ultimatum, and I imagine that was quite nicely sort of handwritten as well. It, you know, said, hey, Duke Gluithian, I think, uh, I think I should have the title of the Duchy of Mercia. Uh, please hand it over because I've looked after most of Mercia for ages anyway and we put a lot of effort in. Things are going really jolly well indeed so if you could hand over the title that would be great. Thanks, bye, love you, kiss. And um, yeah, he did. He absolutely did. He could have said no, which would have plunged into civil war, but I don't think he could have said no because there were lots of people in our faction and we were completely outnumbering him militarily. So he could have said no, it could have plunged into war, but I think it would have been a short-lived war. I don't think he would have been able to sort of put up much of a fight with all the people that were on our side. So um, yeah, he just conceded and said, yeah, all right, you have it, fine, you take the Duchy of Mercia. So yeah, obviously it got renamed very quickly to the Duchy of Cupboard. Uh, the only thing is, now we've actually got quite a lot of people with hooks on us. So all the people that joined our faction have now got a hook on us that lasts for quite a long time. Now it's not a strong hook, it's only a weak hook and they do expire. So the weak hook will expire in 10 years time. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, that's not ideal. It's not ideal, but I guess it makes sense because we had something to gain from this and they didn't really have anything to gain. I mean, they, you know, they, if they had come to war, they would have joined in and they would have sacrificed troops. But the end result, if we'd have won the war, would have been us taking this title anyway. So, you know, they've got these sort of hooks on us. It's not perfect, but do you know what? It's fine. I will take eight weak hooks for the title of the Duchy of Cupboard any day. Oh, also last time we did get ourselves our very first military alliance, didn't we? Which is great stuff. So yes, Christina here, who is our wonderful Amazonian super daughter, she is now betrothed to Ferdinand Mac Merchad Brian. However you pronounce that, I'm not entirely sure. But they're betrothed, which means that we now have an alliance with his dad, who is Petty King Merchad Mac Donchad of Munster, who has around and about 1,500 troops, which is very handy for us. Now, I know we've got more, but if we're having a war and we can call upon his help and he sends over one and a half thousand troops 
to fight for us. That's got to be very, very handy indeed. That is a nice number of troops that we can call upon in a time of need. Also, the very good thing about that particular betrothal is that it's matrilineal. So any children born between Christina and Ferdinand will be born into house cupboard. And this is great stuff for us because they have two excellent traits. So obviously Christina there, she's Amazonian, which is brilliant. So she gets some really good skills from that. And he has got this skill here. He is comely or comely. So yes, he's got a good sort of physical trait as well. So eventually, if they are able to have kids, and they do, the kids might inherit these traits. So we might be able to create ourselves, I know, a great big load of sort of cupboard family, super Amazonian comely people who are just wonderful. And they're going to be born into our own house. They're going to be born into house cupboard because of this matrilineal betrothal here. And it'll be a matrilineal wedding when it happens, which is excellent. So yes, at some point in the future, you two might have to be sort of responsible for producing, I don't know, some sort of uh, troop of super Amazonian mega warriors for house cupboard. Oh yes, you might notice that Waltheof and Ermgard have decided to treat themselves a little bit. So Waltheof there, he's decided to get himself a new duke shirt. So, you know, this is the shirt of a duke. It's a lovely fancy shirt. It's got nice sort of patterns on this sort of on the fabric and everything. So, you know, he's treated himself to that. And Ermgard, oh my goodness me, Ermgard has a fine, fine hat indeed. Look at that hat. I mean, if we click on her, it doesn't do the hat justice because it kind of chops the top of the hat off. So you have to click on Waltheos so you can see the full glory of Duchess Ermgard's new Duchess hat because that's just absolutely amazing. So uh, so yeah, that is, let's, what was it called again? That is a Bokta. A Bokta, possibly, hat. Uh, it's just amazing. It's just absolutely amazing. And you know what? She looks very good in it. I mean, I, I fail to see how anyone could not look good in that particular hat. Um, but there we go. So, right, yeah, so you know, they've, they've treated themselves to some new clothes and some new headgear. And you know what? Why not, eh? Who can blame them? Because, you know, they're now Duke and Duchess. So, uh, yeah, you know, they can, they can go and treat themselves. So first thing we need to do is now go over and join in this Irish war. So yes, we got asked by the Irish to go and have a bit of a fight over there by our lovely new allies. And um, and we kind of went, oh, can you wait a bit while we sort out a potential civil war over here? But of course, the civil war never happened. So now we can go over and fight. So let's see who exactly is fighting who and for what. So Oriel is the actual place in question. So why don't we head over to there and take that immediately? Because that'd be very good for the war score. So, uh, right, let's mark everybody to start in Shrewsbury. So everybody rally in Shrewsbury. Right, let's get time moving. Let's get all the troops mustered. So there we go. We gained men at arms negotiation for five years. Your spouse's excellent stewardship skill and presumably even more excellent hat led to that windfall. So what is that? Men at arms maintenance minus 25% for five years. That is going to save us an awful lot of money. Well done, Ermgard. Oh my goodness me, Ermgard is amazing. Uh, right, let's head over to there then. Let's head straight over to there. So it's going to cost us a little bit of money to go out on the sea. I imagine our people are quite nervous about this because we've never been on the sea before. And none of, none of, yeah, well, now Duke wealthy or sort of people have ever been on boats. This is a whole new world for them. It's all getting a bit scary. There's this big blue wobbly thing and they've got to go out on it in little boats. But okay, it's fine. Right, they're having a bit of a ruckus down here. Now, Athlone, they're at war with. Um, hello, as an influential duke, it's only fair that you have a voice on my council, the steward of Wales. Okie dokie. Hang on a minute. Let's have a look. Were we already the steward of Wales? Were we not already the steward of Wales? Um, oh no, we might have been the steward of, of Gluithian's court, but no, this is a steward of Wales. This is the steward of a kingdom. Oh my goodness me, that's quite good. So we get two tax per month, which is excellent. Domain taxes go up a little bit, building costs comes down, and we get stewardship lifestyle experience up 15%. Now that's very, very handy because we switched over to that last time. We switched over to a stewardship kind of focus. So yeah, we're on stewardship and we've gone down the wealth focus. That's quite handy then. Okay, lovely, right. Let's get our troops over the sea. Come on, let's move time on a little bit quicker. There we go, look, we're in a terrifying boat and we're gonna land over here. Right, and so we're sieging Oriol already. And uh, yeah, back home, back on the home front, some crop fields have been constructed, which is lovely because that brings in extra money, which is always very, very handy indeed. Right, who are they? They are the Duchy of Lothian. Nobody's particularly bothering with us. Nobody's bothering that we are sieging the war target. 
Okay, well that's absolutely fine. Um, somebody has increased their prowess by one. Okay, prowess up to 11, but you do lose four because you're getting old. Okay, that's fine. Okie doke, right? It's still better than quite a lot of people that we've got there. The Munster War for Fathpatak, that, that thing there, on the Earldom of Oriel has ended. Petty King Radri no longer controls any of the claimed counties. Okay. Um, we didn't take it. We didn't take that place. We were sieging it, but we didn't take it. Why is that end? It's invalidated. Um, okay, it was his claim. Uh, oh, he's dead. Oh, yeah, well, that's certainly going to finish things off, isn't it? What happened? He was killed during a siege. Oh, oh, dear. Okay, right, so the guy who had the claim. So, yeah, this, this, uh, who was, who were, yeah, it was our chappy that was attacking, wasn't it? So our chappy was attacking, and this guy here was in his court, I believe. I think that's how it worked. And um, so, yeah, but so he had the claim, but now he's dead. He's died in a siege, and presumably his claim is not passed on to anybody else in anyone's court, so the war is invalid because the claim no longer exists. Oh, okay, so be it then. Right you are. Um, okay, so we just sailed across the sea for no real reason, but let's disband our troops. Away they go. I assume they make their own way back. I'd like to think we give them a boat. <laughs> we don't just go, right, there you go. Bye, everybody. You know, we'll give them a boat back to the, you know, the mainland and then they can make their own way from there. Lively livestock. As additional payment in a recent trade, I find myself in possession of a large herd of cattle. I have been assured that the animals are of the highest quality, but the question of what should be done with them remains. Okay, Northamptonshire will prosper from the herd. Earldom of Northamptonshire gains cattle herd for 15 years, so that's plus 10% development growth per month for just having some very good cows there. For 15 years, that's quite a long time. It's a beautiful herd, a beautiful herd but it could be larger. A stewardship challenge, we breed a large cattle herd that's a plus 20% boost to development for 15 years, or it could go horribly wrong, or we can just, we can just yeah, skin them and get 120 money from them. I think money's all right. We're getting 18.1 money per month. I don't think we need, well, obviously we always need the money. We can spend it on nice things, but maybe one of these would be better. I think maybe this. We've got a 78% chance of, of breeding some cows to make a large cattle herd for 15 years. So 78% chance. Let's give it a go. I mean, if it goes wrong, we spend 35 prestige. That's absolutely fine. We can cope with that. So, okay. It's a beautiful herd. It could be larger. Hooray! We've bred some cows. Wow. Wow. Do our skills know no end? Okay, so now Northamptonshire has got a large cattle herd for 15 years, which here is going to increase the development growth by 20%, which is very good indeed. So, okay, that was pretty good. Oh, crikey. Something else has happened down there. Um, heresy. Mandaeans in Visby. Oh, no. What have you done, you Visby people? Um, okay, yes. It's uh, an organised dualist faith. We consider them evil. They consider us evil. Okay, right. So they've changed a religion that we really, really do not like. Where is the Republic of Visby? Whereabouts are, whereabouts are you? Where is Visby indeed? Oh, it's, it's really far away. It's really far away. We don't even need to worry about that place. It's quite some distance away. Okay, fine. Yep, lovely. They've changed to a kind of strange religion. Okie doke. Um, a duchess. Oh, our duchess has encouraged chivalry, which is wonderful. Okay, hang on a minute. I was reading that one. So we've gained ourselves 75 prestige. She's very good. Um, God is absolutely brilliant. Um, and one of our, who's that? Is one of one of our knights? Our knight has increased his prowess up to 19. Oh, you're very good. I mean, you could do with a bit of a shave, but you're very, very good at doing knight stuff. Okay, lovely. And a knight became a blade master. Hakon. Oh, Hakon's good as well. Oh, Hakon might well be our best knight. Oh, no. He's a bit scarred. Oh. Oh, because he's scarred, his prestige goes up and he's more attractive, apparently. Okay. Um, but yeah, so he's brilliant. He's brilliant. And now he's a blade master, which gives him plus six prowess and increases his disease resistance as well which is always nice oh that's very good that is very very good indeed okay so some of our knights have just immediately just become a little bit better that is excellent news okay the money's coming in let's go and invest somewhere else so have they finished building their fields yet not quite but they're getting there shropshire have got five months left to build their fields uh okay stafford's got a castle warwick 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 doesn't have a castle that's just wrong. I think that's just wrong. Oh, oh, we can construct a duchy building. Oh, this is very exciting. Oh yeah, we've got the money. We need 255 money to construct a duchy building. So these are special buildings that you can build in one place in a duchy. I don't think anywhere else 
in the Duchy of Mercia can build a duchy building. It has to go in Warwickshire, and there's all sorts of exciting things. They're a bit expensive, and they take a heck of a long time to get done, and that's 10% quicker as well. So, you know, it, they're, they're quite big projects, but they're really, really good. So, military academies, army maintenance 2% down. We get two more knights, and our knights become 25% better. Um, marches are sort of to do with defense, aren't they? Yeah, so if people are attacking us, we get better defense. Siege works. The siege weapons are better and they're tougher, so they're less likely to kind of be destroyed in a fight or whatever. Um, Royal Armouries, levy size up 20%. That is very, very good. Jousting grounds is stuff with kind of horses. We haven't really got much in the way of cavalry. Uh, blacksmiths improves your infantry and your spearmen and brings your men-at-arms maintenance down by 6%. Archery grounds is archers and skirmishers. Tax offices, holding taxes plus 10%. All your holdings in the duchy. So all the holdings in the entire of the duchy, so all of the all of the sort of settlements and cities and villages and I assume the bishoprics and you know, the sort of religious places, they will give us 10% extra money. At leisure palaces, monthly prestige plus 5%, stress loss plus 15%, um, our scheme chances go up a little bit and control growth goes up. That's really good. That is very good indeed. Or Royal Reserves just gives you plus 0.8 monies per month forever and ever. Oh, I want both. I want both Leisure Palaces and Royal Preserves because they're both really, really good. So yeah, we'll bid either a Chateau or Royal Forest. Um, yeah, that's development growth or oh, popular opinion would go up as well. But I do like the idea of this. Control growth goes up, so we'll be more, more sort of able to control everybody around the place. More prestige. Stress loss is very good. How stressed are we? Are we quite stressed? I don't know how stressed we are. Um, hang on a minute. Come out of that. Um, oh, no, we're okay. We're okay for stress. How about then? How about in Warwick? Let's build ourselves. I mean, yeah, I, this is really tempting. This is really tempting. 20% levy size for everywhere in the entire duchy is very, very good. But I, I'm, I'm really tempted by either a leisure palace to get stress loss down, all that, or plus 0.8 per month for a load of royal reserves. What do we go for? Given that we've got some allies now, and we can go and get some more allies because we have some more children that we've not yet married off to anybody, which we do need to look at very soon, I think let's go for royal reserves. It's a lot of money, it takes a long time, but that's a lot of money per month. Development growth is up well as well, so you know, all the holdings in the duchy yeah, you know, there's quite a lot of stuff in this duchy. 10% um, increase to their development per month. And popular opinion of us goes up by five, which is excellent. So, yeah, let's build ourselves some royal forests, which sounds very lovely indeed. So, yeah, level one, royal forest. Yes, please. It's a heck of a lot of money. And what do we need to do to get level two? 340 money. That's a lot of money, but let's get that first one done. And um, yeah, now we're not quite as wealthy as we once were. So uh, so yes, let's just sit back and wait for some more money to come in. Oh, Christina doesn't have a guardian. Christina has nobody looking after her. Oh, that's not going to help very much, is it? So what's she got? So pensive children often do well with a stewardship education. Okie dokie, right, stewardship. I have the perfect person to educate you. And it is your own mother. There we go. Oh no, she can't. Why can't your mum do it? Why can't your mum teach you stewardship? Is it because she's already teaching somebody else, possibly? Is that why? Um, okay. Herobert? Herobert might have to do, then. He's got 14, which is not bad. That's not terrible. Um, yeah, okay. Herobert, then. You go and do that, then. You become, you become, yes, uh, the ward of Christina. I mean, it does work out quite well, actually, because he's a knight. He's a knight, and she's going to be like an Amazonian super soldier at some point. So, you know, it makes sense that she gets kind of a nice Amazonian kind of upbringing. I would love it. I would love it if she got some sort of super martial skills, because that would just be brilliant. But, uh, but Jay, what? It's fine. She can go. She can go into stewardship as well. That's all good. So, yeah. Okay. How about we do that? And it's already been done. Okay. Lovely. Now, what we might also want to look at as well, um, Clara. Clara is not married. Could we now have a look around? Now that we're... That obviously, yes, she is now the daughter of a duke and a duchess. Does that give us slightly more sort of sway in who might want to marry her? Oh my goodness me. There are three very, very interesting prospects right here at the top of the Alliance Power ordered list of prospective suitors for Clara Cupboard. The first one is Prince Renault, possibly Renault, of France. The Prince of France... We could get an alliance 
with the Kingdom of France. I mean, France is quite big. I mean, it's not as big as it once was. Bits of it keep disappearing and turning English, but oh my goodness, the Kingdom of France could be our ally. The only problem with that is that, uh, yeah, if they keep having fights with England, there might be a point where the Kingdom of France comes to us and says, hey, join in our fight against England, please. That could be a bit of an issue for us, but oh my goodness me. And um, then the other one down here, we're not going to go for this, but yes, we could. We could marry Duke Gluithian, who was our liege. We could marry uh, her to him. I, 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 Is that what we want to do? I don't know. I mean, he's got a claim on the Duchy of Cupboard. I, I don't really like the fact that he's got a claim on that. Um, or there is Prince Gottfred Eriksson of Denmark. So we could possibly get an alliance with Denmark. Uh, okay, how strong are all these places? Okay, so uh, let's go over and have a look at... Uh, let's go and have a look at Denmark. So how strong are you, Denmark? 2,149 people. Okay, that's quite good. Let's move that out of the way, actually. Right, France, how are you? 4,400 people. Oh my goodness me, that's quite a lot. And um, and yeah, you you've not got quite as many as that, have you? Uh, if we go over to there and look at you, you've got although you've got about two thousand. You've got about two thousand. You also really really don't like us. Okay, okay. I mean, I'm tempted by this. Can we can we do this? Hang on. What are you like? You're Prince Renaud of France. You're son of the king. You're a dishonorable gambler. Uh, what does that mean? You're a uh, ah oh right okay right. So you are. A bastard. You are not born of a legal pairing of parents and will have to live with the stain of illegitimacy his whole life. He may not inherit titles. Now, we're not really doing this to inherit titles. We're doing this so we can call upon France to help us if we have a fight. Because we can call upon four and a half thousand French people to just come and, and have a fight for us. That's very, very tempting. And he's going to go, he'd go for it. Oh my goodness me, because he really wants an alliance. That is an acceptable thing. Oh my goodness me. We could marry the Prince of France and get an alliance with the French. Okay. Okay, right. Okay, that's interesting. Now, okay, where's where's Chappie from... Uh, hang on, can we can we go back? Um, yeah, where's... Uh, water it by alliance power. Um, so you there... Oh, right, he's only one years old. I was going to I was gonna check his sort of uh, stats on it, but yeah, he's, he's one. He's teeny tiny. Um... How old is... So Clara is eight. The Prince of France is only seven. So they're quite close in age. We've also got Carlo Contarini here. The Duchy of Tuscany. Okay. Oh, that's... Oh, that's really big. Oh, that's quite big as well. Oh my goodness me. We've got so many good choices. Okay. So Tuscany, 2,621. The other thing is, he is 18 already. He's greedy, callous and paranoid. Yeah, he doesn't sound like a nice kind of guy. I think we go for you. I'm very tempted here. So we can't do matrilineal. in it. I bet they'll say, no, get off. I'm not that bothered by that. I'm not that bothered by that. Let, let's just, let's do this. Let's get Clara married to Prince Renault of France. And you know, I'm sure they'll get on absolutely fine. He's rowdy. Okay, that's fine. He's rowdy and she is bossy. Oh, that is brilliant. Oh, there, there's a match made in heaven right there. Okay, so a rowdy person and a bossy person. It's a, it's a perfect mix. Let's do this. Yes. Let us arrange a betrothal. Is that actually going to happen? Is he going to say yes? Oh my goodness. We have an alliance with the King of France. Oh my goodness me. Okay, yes, Clara is betrothed to Renault. I'm amazed. I'm absolutely amazed. We've now got the French on our side if we need it. The only thing is, yes, the French also have us on their side. And um, yeah, they might decide to call us in help with some wars with England. And that could be problematic for us. But you know what? We'll deal with it when it happens. Um, one of our commanders has been improved. Yeah, it's very good doing that commander improvement thing. Uh, where is it? The council. Yeah, doing that thing, train commanders, is really good. Possibly we should have organised levies when we went to war. Completely forgot about that. But yes, training commanders and knights are getting better and better, which is really very handy indeed. Oh, hang on a minute. Oh, crikey, what's happened? Seal wolf. Oh, oh, our bishop guy. Oh, he's dead. And, and Frederick, Frederick really hates us. Okay, right, Frederick... What are you like? You're Danish. You're a Danish person. You're an astute intellectual. You're deceitful. You're gluttonous, and you're lazy. Hang on a minute. You've got two of the two of the deadly sins. <laughs> okay, right. Okay, you've got quite a lot of titles going on there. Okay, yeah, that's interesting. Um. Okay. So how about we do a sway scheme on you? 
we need you to like us because at the moment you're not sort of you're not approving of us you're not endorsing us so we do not get any levies or taxes from all of the church holdings that are in our place okay right so farewell seal wolf that's very sad and we've got some additional tax as well we've got 80 extra money 179 monies now okay um where can we build something nottingham 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 um you've got resin collectors what else can we build in nottingham how about we build i mean a castle would be really handy what's a forest a forest fort gives us levies plus 100 so we get an extra 100 people to call upon in a fight and the fort level goes up and a garrison yeah it's just like a forest castle okay yeah okay yeah let's get ourselves one of those because yeah nottingham doesn't really have any kind of defense at the minute so yeah okie doke build yourselves a castle in nottingham and Ermgard is pregnant again so that will mean what our fifth child on the way oh that's very good do you know what it must have been the hats and Shrewsbury's crop fields have been completed and the Bastion and Curtain Walls have been completed over there in Huntingdonshire. Oh, look at this. Look at the money that's coming in. All of the taxes coming in from our lovely places. Nottingham, that's going to go up a little bit, I imagine. And Stafford, that's looking wonderful. Look, 1.6 for Shrewsbury now. Oh, yes, we are making a lovely pile of money every single month. This is great. Oh, and excellent news, T has become slightly less rubbish, which is excellent. He has increased his prowess by one. So now he's got a prowess of nine, which is still entirely average. But, you know, that's good. You've improved it by one. It's better than improving it by nothing at all. Uh, okay, lovely. Well, there you go, T. Good job. And we have ourselves another son to welcome to the Cupboard Dynasty. Okay, right. What can we call you, son of ours? I think we're going to call him Good Hat because I think the Good Hats were responsible for his, you know, being on Earth. I think the, the, the allure of two wonderful hats was just too much for his parents and they just got writing loads of letters to the stork. So, yeah, let's call him Good Hat. Welcome to the world, Good Hat. We have got a couple of vassals who want to be on the council. So, yeah, this chap here from Herefordshire, Earl Herowald Wolfstanson, um, you want to be on the council. You believe that you are a powerful vassal. Uh, you're okay. I mean, your best thing is Marshall. We've got Marshall of 18. However, on the council, we do already have somebody who's very good at marshalling, and you're also considering yourself a powerful vassal. You've both got the same kind of stats there. You've both got a marshal of 18, so neither of you are going to be any better than the other person doing the job. I can't put you both in the same job, so you're just going to have to just be grumpy about this for a while, Earl Herowald. So, um, yeah, we can't give you a job right now because there's no real point. Um, and then the other one is uh, Earl Eormenric Wolfstanson. Oh, look, you're both Wolfstansons. Are you both? Are you related? Are you two related? Um, Herowald. Oh, you are. You are related. Oh, OK. Oh, you seem quite good. You're August, or how you pronounce that, August. Um, an adequate bargainer. You're honest, humble, and calm. Oh, that's lovely. You're quite nice. You have a quite good diplomacy. Hang on, 17 diplomacy. Um, oh, Reeve. Reeve Edmund is our Chancellor, Vassal, and Knight. But you, I do not believe, consider yourself important anymore. Maybe once upon a time you did, but now everything's changed. You're no longer as important as maybe you thought you were. Maybe we replace you with that chap there yeah okay so that at least gets one of them off my back so yeah there we go and he'll get a bit grumpy with us but do you know what he'll get over it so there we go right so we've got you on the council and also we get a prestige boost for that don't we we get a prestige boost for having a powerful vassal every powerful vassal that's on our council i believe gives us five percent extra prestige every month so there you go we just got ourselves a little tiny bit extra prestige as well i've noticed that's come right down hang on a minute hang on can we do another epic? Yes, we can. We can do another epic. Do you know what? We'll wait till we've got about 300 gold. And then we'll go and do ourselves another family epic. And just bring in more prestige. But uh, but yeah, it might be different to the last one. We might get different sort of questions and things pop up. And different events and stuff. So yeah, we'll wait a little while. Maybe maybe at the, maybe the new year. Maybe in the, the glorious year of 1091. We'll commission ourselves a new epic. Uh, more car of uh, Durham gained 20 opinion of us, uh, despite our, our spouse's poor diplomacy. Uh, yeah, she's only got five. Never mind, we won't talk about that. But do you know what? It doesn't matter because it clearly worked. And we've got enough to get ourselves another stewardship perk. Uh, okay, no, it's our first stewardship perk. Uh, okay, right. Which one of these do we go for? 
Do you know what? None of these are particularly exceptional, particularly the top row of things, all the ones that we can choose are not very good. I mean, this one here is really good. Popular figurehead is very, very good. Popular opinion goes up by 50. So each county will have a popular opinion increase of plus 50 of us. I mean, at the moment, a lot of those are around noughts and they'll go down to minus five or whatever. Plus 50, that is massive. That is very, very good indeed. So yeah, if we get that, the people will love us. That could be quite good, but there is some kind of rubbish to go through before you can even get there. So what's that? That's seven perks in. You have to get all those six ones before you can get that. And some of these are a bit, they're a bit naff. I mean, you know, professional workforce, building construction time down 30%. Okay, I mean, you know, it's 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 okay, but it's not brilliant. And cutting cornerstones, um, buildings and holdings are five percent cheaper in terms of gold, piety, and prestige. I mean, that's neither here nor there. I mean, okay, it, it's better than no percent, but it's not really going to change too much stuff. Meritocracy, you can use claim thrown against your liege. I mean, I think that might be a bad thing for us to do right now, possibly, but maybe it could come in handy. I mean, this thing down here is quite good, likable. Your vassals like you a bit more, which is quite useful. Now we actually have some vassals. I think maybe let's go, let's try and get down to popular figurehead and make the people of the uh, the lovely sort of, uh, the Duchy of Cupboard actually like us a bit more. So um, yeah, we're gonna choice of taxman or cutting cornerstones. I mean, taxman, uh, you look at it, you can think, go, ah, that's quite useful. Collect taxes effectiveness plus 25%. That's the ability that our, um, that our chancellor has. So, I mean, that's not gonna make much difference at all. That's going to make very, very little difference. Can we see? So we currently get 18.8. If we get Taxman, which I think we might, let's unlock that. So our steward becomes 25% better at getting taxes. We've given him a 25% bigger bag to put the money in. Um, and it's up to 19. So, you know, it's made a tiny, tiny bit of difference, which, yeah, okay, it's fine. It's better than nothing. It is absolutely better than no increase at all. So, Joe, you know what? Beggars can't be choosers. We'll take it. And... Does he like us? He, yes. Okay, right. Our bishop guy actually now likes us a bit and he is endorsing us, which is wonderful. So we get all our levies back up and we get a little bit more money from all the church holdings. Okay, that's very, very good. Yeah, the church holdings don't generate much money. The church holdings do generate quite a lot of levies. There are quite a lot of troops. But yeah, they generate... 0.2 in terms of money so yeah that's absolutely fine but there we go again he's on our side that's good news okay so it's the 1st of january 1091 let us commission ourselves a new family epic because uh, because the old one has expired it's been over 10 years and so yeah we need a new one because our prestige has dipped down to a paltry 2.6 per month that's just terrible so yes let us commission a new family epic 125 gold we've saved up quite a bit of gold so yeah okay let's get composing another family epic what i need is a classical tale of the grandeur of my family a chronicle about the origins of the cup of dynasty and how we are destined for greatness also remember that somebody's already done this so maybe write about a different aspect of the cup of dynasty i only need someone who knows how to tell a story okay edmar oh my goodness edmar cost two 150 minutes but it's a high chance of an exceptional epic um that is an unpredictable chance if we get our own scribes to do it um get any old bod get leofwin the servant to do it and it's a low chance and that we give up do you know what if we're gonna do it we're gonna do it properly like we did before let's just spend the money let's get Eid Mayer, the accomplished storyteller in. Yeah, let's get you in. You're very expensive. You're going to make us bankrupt. But we're getting, what, 19 money per month. So we'll, we'll get that back in no time at all. So, okay, right. We've broken the bank, everybody. We've plunged the kingdom into debt. Now, that is generally bad because that means that you can get corruption and people start, you know, the money's gone. So, you know, bad stuff happens. But we'll get it back. My family epic seems progressing well. And some lines already sound like they'll be quoted for decades to come. But Ebmai has a lot of questions about the the focus of the story. It would be easier to answer if he wrote it all first, then I could tell him what I dislike about it, but he insists he needs the answers. Okay, so we get more prestige, we get more renown, or we get piety, but we also stress out about uh, telling it truthfully. Let's tell them, yeah, we did this before, didn't we? A family history, so we get some more renown. We don't have much renown. Renown comes in quite slowly indeed. So yeah, so let us do this. Let's uh, tell them it's a family history. Let's get more renown when the epic is done. Can we just wait a while before we have to spend any more money on it, please? Because, um, because yeah, we don't have very much in the way of cash anymore. So if you could just wait one more month until we're actually, you know, out of the red 
and back in good favour with the, you know, ye olde bank manager. That would be wonderful. Come on, let's get paid. I just want to see that not be in debt. Yay, a colossal no money. <laughs> but it's better than a sort of negative no money. Okay, it seems if Frederick has been reading parts of my new family epic. Of course, he has discovered discrepancies between promises made in the past and our current reality. I can tell he will not let it go anytime soon. Surely you can see how wise and benevolent it would be to fulfil your forebear's promise even now. Okay, I belong to a long line of promise keepers. So the control level in the Elder of Staffordshire changes by minus 30. He gets a big opinion of us. We get 75 prestige. We get 100 piety, but we also get stressed out. Or we can just say, my ancestors were pious, but not necessarily wise. He loses 10 opinion of us. He then stops endorsing us, but we gain 150 prestige right now. Yeah, I don't want to do that. That top one is terrible. So yeah, the control of Staffordshire comes down and we get stressed out. Yeah, let's not do that. We're working on a sway scheme on him anyway. So okay, he'll stop endorsing us for a bit, but then he'll come back around when that sway scheme thing ticks around. Okay, fine, right you are, you fussy bishop. We have a commander that might be possibly quite good. Um, yeah, prowess 14, he's an aspiring blade master. He's an organiser, so movement speed goes up by 25%. That could be quite good. And you've got a martial skill of 15. How much would it cost to actually get you into court? Only 15 money. Yeah, okay, why not? Do that. That's not very much money. I mean, okay, we don't have loads of money. Um, oh, could I have got that for free, possibly? Okay, right, well, there we go. Lesson learned. Read the thing first before you jump to conclusions. So we might have just wasted 15 gold. We might have wasted around about a month's worth of money there. But okay, never mind. What's done is done. A question of time. I've not been presented with new work on my family epic for weeks, and the whole process is either taking too long or he ends up doing shoddy work. Is it truly too much to demand that he delivers excellence and that he delivers it now? This is going to require lots of money, isn't it? I have a feeling that this is going to be very expensive. So I want it to be good and I want it now. So if we act like a spoiled child who's you know, stamping their foot on the floor, um, we have a reduced chance of producing an exceptional epic. Or I will do this for as long as it takes. I will put him up for as long as it takes. It's only 60 money. It's only 60. So, okay, we're going to go back into debt again, but it's not too bad. Okay, right, yes, I know the game, so you're in debt, yay, let's try and sort this out for you. I know we're in debt, game, it's all good. Okay, I think in the background there we have failed to sway the bishop guy, which is a bit of a shame, yeah, he's still on minus four, but we'll keep that going, that's fine, we've got no other schemes underway right now. And clearing, some months ago, Reeve Serdic, who are you? Who's Reeve Serdic of Ludlow? Who are you? I don't know who you are. Okay, right, you're a person. Um, you began clearing land in the forest of Ludlow to prepare for settlement. Trees are uprooted, paths are cut, and ground is swaled. I don't even know what swaled is, but okay, you're swaling all over the floor. Serdic has now written to Stuart Edwolf to request that his levy duties be reduced. Being anxious to complete the works for next harvest, he hopes to recruit soldiers for labour. Okay, so take all the commoners you need. Shropshire has reduced troop levy by 50%. Ooh, good grief. Hang on, Shropshire. Uh, Shropshire, Shropshire. There you go. What do you provide, Shropshire? So, Westbury is 223. Only 73 from Ludlow. 264 from Shropshire itself. From Shrewsbury, sorry. Um, okay. But so, what happens with that, though? We just lose some troops. What's the benefit from that? What good thing happens from this? The entirety of Shropshire could do with that. We get troops levied for construction... So we get troop size down by 25%, but buildings are a bit cheaper to construct in terms of gold and piety and prestige. Or the Earldom of Shropshire gets increased troop levy for 10 years and the levy size goes up by 25%. Okay, I assume this has some sort of repercussions later down the line. So if we say take all the commoners you need, Serdic, that bad thing happens now. But then at some point in the future, he's going to go, hooray, we've built a new thing. We've built an exciting thing, Your Honour. Yeah, that's got no good things about it. Well, okay, development growth goes up, but your levy size is down. Your levy size is down a great deal. What's the development look like? It's already nine. It's already okay. It's nine out of a hundred. It's super developed. Um, well, we could just do that. Or we could just say increase troop levy for ten years. Let's just do that. The fields of battle will need a lot of bodies this year. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, 10 years, they get 25% increase. That's not really worth doing, is it? Let's do this. Let's say levy size down, but any buildings we build over there are a bit cheaper to do. Or do we just do that, though? 
Hang on, now now I'm being completely indecisive. Development growth is plus one per month, and we lose some troops. Let's just do that. Take all the commoners you need, absolutely. Let's get Shropshire a little bit more developed, and uh, the writers retreat. Edmire has been caught trying to sneak off from his duties. Thankfully, a guard recognised him as he passed the gates. It is exhausting work, he defends himself. Day and night, my benevolent lord, I am desperate for a few days' rest. Okay, a break is in order. We increase the chance of an exceptional epic, but it costs 120 monies. I don't think we can afford it. I don't think we can plunge the kingdom, <laughs> plunge our little sort of our duchy into bankruptcy so much because we want to write some stories about ourselves. Or we reduce our chance of producing an exceptional epic, but we must have upped our chance from doing that quite a lot anyway. We've invested quite a lot into it, uh, and we gain 20 dread. I mean, dread gets us dread gets us prestige anyway because it gives us a percentage increase. Let's let's chain him to his work table. I'm really sorry, Edmire. We can't afford your completely extortionate costs, so we're going to chain you to a desk <laughs> and just make you work. But it is made... It, yeah, there you go. It gave us plus 0.4 prestige per month because people are scared of us, and we've got a perk that gives us prestige for the amount of dread we have. Oh, dearie me, there we go. So yes, because we were in debt, we're no longer in debt, but because we were, Huntingdonshire, oh crikey, hang on, that's probably bad. Um, Huntingdonshire has now got uncooperative guilds. So anything we build in Huntingdonshire is going to take longer and cost more because of, yes, a bit of corruption because we were in debt. Okay, uh, right, our brother Donald has died. So Donald Dunkeld is no more. Oh, that's a bit of a shame. He had all the claims on Scotland and stuff that we never really could do much about. And um, we've gained 20 stress... Okay, that's probably quite bad, but okay, that's a very sad thing. I'd like to think we went to the funeral and we're all sort of weepy and sad. Uh, and what's that? We're being raided by Chieftain Lars. Who are you? You're from Lapland. Okay, right, so we're <laughs> Donna and Blitzen and Rudolph have come to invade. Okay, right, so the High Chieftain of Lapland. Uh, yeah, so you're all the way over there. I mean, you've come quite a long way to, to raid over here. I mean, can we, do we just go and attack you? Do we just go and attack you? I and mean, we could just muster the troops there and go in and stamp on them. They would not stand a chance against us. Uh, okay, do you know what? Let's go and fight off our prospective invaders. Let's raise a load of people. And then, yeah, three days left to gather. So that'll be done in no time. So, oh, an excellent epic. Oh, well done. It was worth chaining you to a table. Oh, and you get really big, inspiring music. Edmire has completed my family epic, and what a glorious chronicle. It has high drama, moral quandaries, and tense jewels. Everything my family has been forged from is in there. Even the part with the raging ox. Oh, okay. So dragons to raging oxes. Okay. Lacking a bit of imagination, but right you are. Seemingly so far-fetched has become a touching moment outlining the destiny of my house. It might be the greatest chronicle ever written since the last one of those that we wrote. So it's an excellent family epic. Five prestige per month. We get 75 prestige right now. And we get 75 renown, which is very good because renown goes up really slowly. 0.62 per month. So to get 75 of it in a big blob, that's actually quite good. So there we go. The greatest chronicle ever written. And uh, Knight has become a Blade Master. T has gained the trait Aspiring Blade Master. Oh, is T now. T is becoming quite good at fighting. Maybe T has actually found his sort of his sort of place in life. He's more of a fighty kind of knight person rather than anyone who goes, you know, just thinking and looking after kingdoms. Maybe he is just somebody that goes and has a bit of a war. Okay, that's fine. Okay, if you're getting better at that, that's good. Um, also, yeah, good hat. Good hat. Let's get you educated, good hat. Um, why don't, you, why don't we educate good hat? We could educate good hat for a bit. There you go, good hat. We'll look after you. There you go. You can become our ward. That's exciting. Right, here we go. Let's just go and sort of fight off these invading people who are here. And we will probably win. They are defending a river crossing. They're higher quality. Really? Really? Okay, I, I mean, we've got the numbers. We've got the numbers on them. I think it should be fine. Now, we don't need to technically go and fight them. We don't really need to go and fight them because they're not in our lands yet. But we might as well. We'll, we'll chase them away. Um, okay. Okay. Chappy that we chained to a desk is saying, um, shall we go somewhere? Um, oh, uh, he becomes our friend. We don't have to pay him any money. He just stays here. Oh, he becomes our friend, whatever happens. Oh, okay. Well, let's let's keep him here. We might as well. He seems quite good. He's quite clever. Uh, okay, yeah, you can become you can become my friend and you can stay in court. 
Oh, that's nice. King Richard is being attacked by King Robert. Oh my goodness, hang on a minute. What's, what's going on here? I wanted to get this bit done. Right, King Robert of England is attacking King, King Richard of Wales. What is this thing here, however? Who are you? Why have you decided to declare war at exactly the same time? <laughs> uh, hello, right, yes, you want to honour the alliance. Uh, the Munster claim on the Earldom of, of Connaught, is it? Okay, so who are you fighting over here? Who do we need to join in? So we need to go and attack them over there. Uh, what are you actually trying to trying to claim? Just the Earldom of, of Connaught itself, or Connaught, uh, which is, yeah, just that, that big one there. That's a, That's huge. That's a huge, great big kind of county, that is. That's very big. Um, okay, I feel like we should say yes. But if we say no, he only loses 10 opinion. And I think we might get dragged... Are we going to get dragged into this particular war? Because there's a war going on between Wales and England. Is Are we going to get hauled into that? I don't know. Do you know what? We'll accept this. And we'll see what we can do. So yeah, okay, we'll join in. That's absolutely fine. Right now, however, we've got some sort of internal matters to deal with. We need to go and chase away some raiding people. So let's see. Hopefully we can win. Hopefully we can do this, right? All sorts of people have joined in the fighting. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hang on. Something popped up just there that said somebody had his head ripped off. What? Did somebody just have their head ripped off? Hang on. Victory. Battle of Pockington. Um details did any of our people die i swear it popped up there and said it looked like it said somebody has had their head ripped off or something <laughs> have i gone mad knights um they're all oh no re you're dead he did it was him yeah reeve edmund has had his head ripped off oh oh that's a terrible way to go out oh i'm sorry edmund i mean you were a bit rubbish at in the fighting possibly i should have not had you up at the front there doing actual sort of knightly stuff Oh my goodness me. Right, yeah, you're you're a bit dead. Reeve Edmund of Rutland is no more. Well, I suppose now he's actually more. He's, he's in two bits. <laughs> he, he's in multiple parts now. Um, oh, sorry, Edmund. Oops, I, I apologise, Edmund. Uh, it's a bit late now, but there you go. Yeah, I, I've never... That's very detailed. It's not just that we're, like, we're slain in battle. He has had his head ripped off. Okay, lovely. Right, well, there we go. I mean, we beat the baddies, so that's pretty good. Let's go... Um, let's go over there. We'll head over this way to Shrewsbury. And we'll... Uh, yeah, we'll pop over there. We'll try and stock up on some more troops. We'll try and replenish our troops. And then we'll head over there to Ireland and join in the fight. Meanwhile, this war here between England and Wales is the English claim on the Kingdom of Wales. So, King Robert, Kurtos, possibly or Kurtos, still not sure how you pronounce it, he has declared war on his brother, King Richard of Wales. I mean, it doesn't look good. It doesn't look good <laughs> for for Richard of Wales. It looks quite bad because, uh, because yeah, he's got 5,742 troops, has, uh, has King Robert of England, whereas uh, King Richard of Wales has got 1,000. It doesn't look very good, does it? Now, what I'm thinking is... It, it, it's, it's, I mean, yeah, the, it's a foregone conclusion. We know who's going to win this. I think England have got this completely in the bag. Is it worth asking to join in the war when we know they're going to win anyway? So we will likely be on the winning side if we join the English side of the war. Is it worth doing that? Can we even do that? Can we go to war against what? who is our ultimate liege at the minute? I do not know. Hang on. Let's have a little look. So, uh, right, go to there. There you go. The king. Right. Can we join in? Uh, no, we can't. We cannot because he's not our ally. So it's just a war between those two and we just can't join in or do anything about it. The only thing is, it would help us out actually a great deal. So if we look at uh, if we look at us right now, our liege is King Richard of Wales. But if we look under here, there is a little thing saying levies and tax are reduced as King Richard of Wales is not your rightful liege. Because of course he's not. King Richard of Wales should be looking after Wales and uh, King uh, Robert of England should be looking after England. That's what people believe the structure should be. But uh, but yeah, obviously Richard there of Wales has claimed all of that territory. And so we now are suffering a bit. So yeah, levies and tax are down because the people of, of well, obviously the uh, Duchy of Cupboard now, they believe that they've got the wrong liege. They believe that he is not our rightful king and that that is our rightful king down here. So if he wins, which I imagine... King Robert of England will, then uh, yeah, that thing will get removed 
because the King of England will look after Mercia, which is English, and uh, yeah, we should see our levies and our tax go up a little bit. Oh, well, that's quite good. That might work out quite nicely for us. Okay, splendid. Uh, right, let's get our troops over here to Shrewsbury then and just sort of uh, build them up a little bit. Oh, Northampton is under siege by, oh, of course, yeah, by the English because they're going to come in and, and siege our places because we're under control of, of him. We're, we're under his sort of banner at the minute. Do you know what? I might have to, I might have to let them, I might have to let them do it because I want to be under English control rather than Welsh control <laughs> because it benefits us in the long run. So yeah, you guys crack on. I, I'm going over to Ireland. Bye bye. What I don't know is if this does any kind of lasting damage when a place gets sieged, does it do any kind of permanent damage to the infrastructure or anything like that? I do not know. I'm not entirely sure. Spouse, up to the task. Look at the hat. It's amazing. Some of my counsellors believe the job is theirs by right of blood or influence alone. How wrong they are. I expect results. Yet I'm often disappointed. After a long day, I'm complaining to Ermgard when she interrupts me. Let me do something about it, husband. A few lessons might sharpen their wits. Okay. So we go and chew to some people. I mean, I don't think you need to go and tell Theo Delinda how to do her job. <laughs> I think that's fine. Okay, Eadwolf. You've got 16 stewardship and Eomric, you've got 17. Yeah, so Eadwolf is the one with the lowest of the skills. So if we do that, read Eadwolf of Coventry, he gains studying stewardship for 15 years. So he gets plus two stewardship and plus one learning, which is very good. But he also doesn't like the fact that we've made him go to school. So he loses 15 opinion of us. His opinion of us is plus 83. That's fine. I will do that for a boost to your stewardship. Okay, yeah, that's absolutely fine. Right, and then um, right, we've got 2,123 troops. I think maybe we make our way over to Ireland. Okay, cancel the trip to Ireland. War has been declared upon us directly by none other than Duke Gluithian. Oh my goodness me, the person who we took the Duchy of Mercia from and turned it into the Duchy of Cupboard has come knocking on the door asking for it back. Oh my goodness me. Right, okay, we might need to call upon our allies for this one. So yeah, he's got quite a lot of military strength, but that is with his allies combined. They're not going to join in. The Irish will not join in our particular battle because they're doing their own fight. However, the French might help us out. We might need to turn to the French to see if we can actually you know, keep our claim upon the Duchy of Cupboard. Oh my goodness me. I mean, okay, we have no choice. We have to rally the troops. He has declared war on us. Okay, rally the troops. I think that is a perfect point to leave it for now. I think we'll finish things up and next time out, we will fight for the independence of the Duchy of Cupboard and see if we can keep it out of the hands of the evil Duke Gluithian. And, you know, if we can win, that would be nice. He will go away. He will, you know, be very, very ashamed indeed. But we might need help from our French buddies. We might possibly need their assistance because, yeah, we've got 2,123 troops. We are suffering a bit because, yeah, England are taking over our territories at the moment. So this has all got very, very complicated indeed. So we'll come back next time and we'll see what is going on. Oh, no. Hang on. People are being killed in the sieges. Who's died? <gasps> oh, Oh, whoa, 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 what? No, no, hang on a minute. Hang on, hang on. This is probably very important. Um, the holding is now occupied. Right, so Northampton is lost. Yeah, okay. Bought my improved. Good job. Um, a courtier's been killed. So, Alfreda, I don't know who you were. Who were you? Were you our... Were you our physician? You might have been our physician, possibly. Hang on. Yes, I think maybe you were our doctor. So, you're now a bit dead. So, the, the doctor is dead. However, people have been captured. Good hat. <gasps> little good hat he's only one let him out so um yeah so oh no and clara clara and good hat have been captured i mean it's all it's all for the good of the realm really i mean it's terrible but you, you might have to suffer but soon we will be under english rule again and things will be wonderful we won't be under the rule of the tyrant king richard of wales we will be under the glorious rule of king robert of england so this is bad this is all very bad stuff indeed, but don't worry, don't worry. We'll get you out sooner rather than later. I think that war's pretty much done. Okay, right. Well, that that's interesting. That certainly mixed things up a bit. Uh, right, well, there we go. Now, with that knowledge, I think we will indeed finish up for now. And next time, we'll come back and deal with all sorts of things that are indeed going on. I mean, who knows where we're going to go next? We've got to try and defend against you. No, not you. Hang on. Hang on. No, where, who, who's, where are you? There. We've got to defend against you. 
Duke Glowithian. I mean, now he's 12. He's all sort of super cocky and overconfident and stuff. So, yes, we will try and defend our lands from the invasion by you and just see how we get on. So, yes, a fight for the independence of the uh, the Duchy of Cupboard is underway and it will happen next time out. Hopefully you are still enjoying this. If you are, please do leave a like. That would be very, very splendid indeed. And also, if you're not already, then please do subscribe to keep up to date with how we get on here next time out in Crusader Kings 3. But for now, thank you very much for joining me in the Geek Cupboard and I will see you next time. Charlotte was murdered by Martin. Do we need to arrest Martin? Aaron was murdered by Martin. The mighty defense rectangle has been completed. We've crashed into a ship over there. Hello, pirates. They're just firing bits of explosive junk. It's killing quite a lot of pirates. Connor was strangled by Martin. Somebody stop him. I'd love to stop him. <laughs>